Okay, everyone, I'm back. Oh, it's great to see everyone's um, really keen. Good to see that uh, big hello to Trid and the team over there in WA after your uh, academy training session this morning. Um, we're probably still about a minute early, so there might be a couple of other people joining us right on time. So we'll just uh, give it a minute. And then I'll, uh, I'll formally start the, um, the webinar. Little bit of housekeeping for everybody. I've got everybody's microphones muted. I've got um, the camera muted except for the, um, the team in the conference room in WA. Um, so I don't think the video will be streamed to anybody other than me at the moment while I'm doing the screen share. But just you have the ability to ask questions throughout the webinar. What I'll do is I won't answer them along the way, but at the end I'll go through the um, the chat window and we'll look at the questions and, and do a QA and a at the end of this presentation. So depending on what device you're on, you should see a chat bubble at the bottom of the window. If you're on a laptop or a desktop, if you're on a something like an iPad, you might have to tap at the top of the screen to expose the menu bar and you'll see a, a participants chat window. You can open that up and then um, choose the uh, the chat button to send a message. So if you want to just pop uh, questions in along the way. So let me get this um, officially started. So I'm Derek Morgan. I'm the founder of USA Sports Scholarship and the Game Changer Program. Basically, in this webinar, what we want, what we hope you uh, achieve, is that you discover, you know, how a, a sports scholarship to study in the USA can give you a winning edge, not just in your sports, but also in your degree if you want to go and study at university, also in your career and just life generally. Um, the whole experience of travelling um, is an amazing, an amazing learning experience, and we'll touch on that as we go through. So my goal for this webinar is to help you sort of discover three things. Firstly, you know, how do you get that winning edge like we just spoke about? Um, what recruitment agents don't tell you about the sports scholarship process? Okay, so there's, there's a whole range of tips and tricks that we're going to pass on to you as part of this process. And the third thing, we want to cover off on is the critical things that you need to know to get a coach's attention. If you want to go down the, the process of putting yourself in the running to get a sports scholarship, what are the critical things that you need to know and do to make that um, opportunity a reality for you? So the, the photo on the left hand side is a picture of the Irish women's national field hockey team at the recent world cup. Now this webinar, whilst it's, it's running conjunction with um Woodhouse Sports Academy, and it's been mainly focused on field hockey. It's actually, it's relevant to any student athlete in any uh, scholarship sport, okay? So we're just using, think of field hockey as an analogy for um, student athletes and sports in general in the US um, college system. But the, the reason for the Irish hockey team, um, I'm going to touch on that a little, bit, a little bit more later, I think. I'll just move on, but it, let, make sure I come back to that. So who am, who's Derek Morgan? Who am I? I'm a father of two teenage daughters that play field hockey. Um, in Maroon in the left, and sorry for the New South Wales under 15 um, girls and family that are they're on here. It was an amazing final the other week at the indoor championships. Um, Amelia, Amelia's still at school. She's in grade 11. She's just starting her scholarship journey. Georgia in red. Uh, She's my oldest daughter. She's done her first semester at um, a college or a university in the States, and she flew back to the States to start a second semester in spring training um, a bit over a week ago. So they're both on a, a sports scholarship journey, but at very different stages. I'm a junior hockey coach. Um, nowhere near the, the talent or ability of, uh, of Trid and lots of other coaches out there. And I think uh, Brent Livermore might be jumping on this, um, this webinar as well at, at some point. And you know, uh, Trid and Brent, both amazing um, ex-Kookaburra players. But 
but yeah, you know, I coach at a junior level. I just love developing kids. I'm a passionate supporter. Just love watching hockey, sitting on the sidelines and just watching my kids run around. And when I'm not playing uh, or when I'm not at a field hockey ground, I actually run my own technology and marketing business here in Brisbane. So our story basically started with Georgia. Um, even before she was 14, she actually 13, she came home one day with a, a note from school, a flyer. She slid it across the table and she said, I don't mind which one I go to, uh, Cambridge or Oxford. And basically what it was was a, um, a summer holiday um, camp for psychology to go over and study for three weeks in the UK. Needless to say, we didn't um, send her over there. But what, what that showed to us was, and what she told us is that she wanted to um, live and study overseas. And we had no idea how we were going to make that dream a reality for her. And as parents, you know, we want the best for our kids. We want, we want to see them pursue their dreams and chase their passions. And we had no idea how to go about that. So we ended up getting uh, introduced to a recruitment agency, a sports recruitment agency, and we thought that that was going to be the answer for us. But uh, we found out during the process and very late in the process that we were wrong there. And I'll cover off on that in a bit of detail as we go through. So at the end of George's um, senior year or grade 12, even though we were with an agency, she had no serious offers. She had um, two offers from two division two colleges which were small rural programs which wasn't what she was after and certainly not the level of hockey that she was after so whilst there was nothing wrong with the schools it was just didn't fit with georgia's goals and what she was chasing so we got a lucky break when through connections we got introduced directly to a coach in the us and as soon as we started speaking directly with the, the coach overseas everything changed um Georgia basically ended up with um, an amazing offer and I'll cover off on that a little bit later. But what we found along our journey and going through the process that there was lots of people facing similar challenges to us. Um, whether they were with an agency, they were having similar challenges to us or even if they were going it alone, there was a whole other set of problems that they were facing trying to um, do their own thing if they didn't want to pay thousands of dollars to a recruitment agency. So, we had an idea of how we could help. And when Georgia, when it was time for Georgia to go overseas, we travelled over with her, settled her in, and then I toured the USA speaking with a whole bunch of coaches. And in that process, I discovered how things really worked in the USA sports scholarship recruitment um, process and, and what you need to go through and what you need to do. And as a result of that, we built usasportsscholarship.com to open up opportunities to more athletes, make it easier for them to investigate. And if they do decide that they want to actually put themselves out there and put themselves in a position to get a scholarship in the States, that they avoid the challenges and hassles and expenses that we had to go through. Okay, so we want to remove that for you. So how does, how does this really apply to you? Um, Georgia was playing Division I women's hockey in Brisbane at 16 with the premiership winning team in that particular year. So, you know, Brisbane, Brisbane is one of the premier competitions in the country as, a, you, know, you know, so she was a good hockey player. Uh, she had made state school, school girls sides. She had also made the under 18 indoors team, but for whatever reason, she wasn't on the radar for other selection. So she wasn't being picked in state outdoor squads. Uh, therefore, she wasn't getting a look in for selection in state outdoor teams and she found that pretty frustrating and she just internally felt that she could actually her hockey could go to another level and that she was capable of delivering on that so Georgia wanted a chance to prove herself but she realized that she wasn't getting that opportunity in the current system because you know as you go up the uh, selection um, process the number of opportunities and positions starts to thin dramatically in most countries and you know and and most sports so she decided that um going overseas one it was what she wanted to do from a study perspective but she also felt that it was going to be her best long-term opportunity to set her up for senior selection and that's a pretty sound theory because what happened with the irish um field hockey team at the recent World Cup. Don't quote me, I think they came into the World Cup ranked about 17th. They actually played off for a gold medal 
ended up um, getting silver. So that was a massive step up for Ireland. And that team had um, at least four girls in that team that had gone through the US college system, played in the States, studied in the States, and developed as athletes through that university and college program. Okay, and this is going to be important to reflect on a little bit later when we chat um, about the resources that are available there in the system to help you develop as an athlete. Okay, so it proved to be a wise decision for Georgia. So this photo of Georgia in August, we took her over there to start pre-season training. It was actually before college had started. It was the end of their summer break. So the coach took us for a, a personal walk around the college and this was Georgia's first look at her locker and all of her um, training gear, her game kit, training shoes, game shoes. We'd sent all the sizes of everything over to her so she had everything ready for her when she walked in there for pre-season. Um, sticks, bags, travel bags, everything that she would need as an athlete um, is available to her and laid on for her as part of her scholarship. So in her first year, uh, she played every game as a freshman. Now, a freshman is basically a first-year university student. So it goes freshman, sophomore, junior, senior is how they rank their, uh, their school and university or college systems. And basically, Georgia played all 19 games, started in 16 of them, and she received a conference rookie award. So this is all from a, a kid that was going through the local system pretty much as an undiscovered talent. But a, a US coach saw something in her, grabbed her, and um, she just thrived in the environment. So this is not a pitch fest on Georgia, rah, rah, Georgia. It was just about, okay, there's lots of kids in similar situations to Georgia, um, what can be achieved? So Georgia won the universe, or Georgia's team, the, um, William and Mary, won the university conference for the very first time. This is from a, um, a university that's the oldest college and second oldest university in the country. So it was a really big deal. She was part of something special. The team set records and you can imagine sort of the experiences of going through that process and being in that in environment. And she's really thriving on the opportunities that are being put in front of her. And basically that's the same opportunities that are available to you as a, as a student athlete. So as I talked about at the end of this webinar, we'll do a Q&A session. We're also going to uh, do a prize draw for one of the lucky attendees on the webinar at the moment. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to give you over $1,000 in um, products and services. Okay, so that's basically two years worth of um, a Game Changer membership subscription plus access to the 30-day game plan, which I'll talk to you about a little bit later. So how's a sports scholarship in the USA um, giving you a winning edge? And I can see that, um, that Brent and Kira have jumped on. So welcome, Brent. Uh, okay, so how's this give you a winning edge? Uh, firstly, in sports. So these images are some of the images from the universities I visited in August. The top left-hand image is an indoor athletics arena that was built for training and competition at Bucknell University. Um, it also has an 80 square metre uh, indoor turf area where the field hockey team trains. There's lots of extremes in weather in the US. It's a big continent and um, winter can get pretty, uh, pretty cold and a fair bit of snow in a lot of uh, states. So if you're going to those states, you, you, wanna, you wanna be comfortable with a winter experience. So they, have, they build indoor stadiums for games, they build indoor stadiums for training, um, and this is just one of them. So incredible amount of infrastructure in the college system over there. The middle image is the reception from a Division III um, university. I'm not gonna go into all the different divisions and associations in detail, but this is a, the foyer or reception for a Division III college. The stairway goes up to the library. Um, the bottom left-hand corner, is the rec, training rec center for athletes at University of Richmond. Um, the resources that are available to you over there are quite staggering. And all of the university campuses that I walked onto, there was a wow factor for just about every single one of them. So the facilities and resources rival 
um, the programs at in most countries. Okay, most national programs don't have access to the resources and facilities that these colleges have access to. So sports a big business, um, a big industry in the states. Um, coaching staff, you've just got. Um, layers and layers of coaching staff and resources available to you. So, for example, Georgia had four full-time coaches in her uh, hockey coaches for a team of uh, or a squad of 27. So there's an Australian head coach, an associate coach from um, Ireland, an assistant coach from Argentina, a volunteer coach who was there full-time from um, Ireland. Then you've got sports trainers, medical staff, sports psychologists, nutritionalists. You've got all of these people around you that are you're basically over there as an elite athlete, particularly in Division I um, and Division Two, to a lesser degree. You've got all of these um, professional resources and you are seriously an elite athlete. And during, during season, you'll be having you know, 20 contact hours a week of um, training of various different types. Um, video sessions, etc. So really professionally run um, processes. So there's nothing like it at state level in Australia, and you really need to be on the um, the national squad and, and you know at the AIS to be getting access to these types of resources. And the funding over there for sports is just staggering. So I'll sort of touch on that in a second. So you're winning at edge as far as you know, just life in general. Um, your your career, your um, academics, uh, it's it's hard to explain, okay? So this is a photo of Georgia um, when they won the conference championship in August, or in November. In that team, she's got good friends from Germany, from Argentina, from um, England. She's got uh, friends, a whole network of friends now from all over North America. Because all of the college, all the kids over in the States, or the majority of kids over in the States, they all travel to go to college. So everybody's traveling from somewhere to um, come into the college system over there. So it, you build an international network of connections, which as a kid, it's hard for you to understand the value of that, but it's extremely valuable to you um, for a whole range of reasons. The alumni networks over there, or the, or the past student networks over there, they have an, an incredible bond or affinity with their colleges, particularly the student athletes. So they tend to be engaged for the rest of their working career and the rest of their lives back with the, um, with the colleges through their alumni networks. That has massive career advantages for you um, moving forward. And we'll, I'll explain a little bit about that later. So when you go overseas to get your degree and play sports overseas, you are really in a unique minority. So it gives you an edge with employers. You know, nowadays, everybody has a degree. Now, most kids going through university do a double degree. So when you've got a lot of these developing countries with really big populations where they really focus heavily on academics and getting the best marks in um, their degree, just having a degree is not a point of difference necessarily. For you as a student athlete, for you as an athlete in general, but particularly in the US college system as a student athlete, um, you learn things, you experience things, you get life skills that are hugely valuable to future employers. And it just makes you a more interesting person when you're actually going for a career. You can go, I've lived overseas, I've trained as an elite athlete, I've done this, I've done that. You've got stories and it makes you grow up fast. That's a massive point of difference in your career versus somebody that stays home and does nothing wrong with staying home and doing a degree at home, but doing a degree overseas just brings a whole layer of advantages to it, okay? So when we talk about funding and resources and infrastructure for sports, this is just one example of a football game. Um, you know, in talking to coaches when I was traveling through there and meeting with them, some of these stadiums get, they get 100... 110, 120,000 people to a local home game. Then in the car parks, they do these things called tailgates. And that's where everyone you know, has their barbecues, their eskies, they set up TVs, they run these big parties out of the back of their trucks 
and they're all in the car park. So the surrounding area around the stadium might have another 100,000 people there. Like it's just, we've got no concept of it here in Australia. Um, you know, the MCG is, is about, you know, is, and stadiums like that, that's where we start to get some, some sort of sense of the um, events that are going on every weekend in college sports. So, you know, one of the universities I was talking to, they're spending over $175 million in the not too distant future to build a mini Olympic style um, village precinct. Um, another college that we we're speaking to, they're spending two and a half million dollars in the next 12 months on new dressing room and training facilities just for their field hockey team. So, you know, that's, you know, 20 odd girls getting a two and a half million dollar complex just for their team. One of the coaches was telling us about um, companies in the States, they'll only employ uh, student athletes. And the reason they do that is because they know the value of the student athlete. They know the value of the experiences they've gone through, the value of working as a team, training as an elite athlete, the discipline that's required, the resilience and the persistence that's required and the determination. And they bring all of those um, skills to the employer in their career. So they know there's a big advantage in, um, in recruiting student athletes. So I'm not going to go deep into the, um, the college sporting system over there, other than to say there's three different associations that govern different sporting bodies and different groups of universities in the States. And this is just around their sports, okay? So in Australia, we have um, 43 universities. And traditionally, you go to university in Australia and you play your club sports or you compete in your club environment for whatever athletic program that you're in. In the States, these colleges are part of massive national um, sporting associations and national um, competitions. So the opportunity to travel accepts is extraordinary. And there's nearly 4,000 or over 4,000 universities and colleges in the USA. So probably the most well-known is the NCAA, but then you've got the NAIA and um, NJCAA, which is the junior colleges. Uh, junior colleges, two-year programs, which lead into getting you your four-year degree. So it's the first two years of a four-year degree. And then um, NAI and CAA are four-year um, university programs. So like you might not understand at the moment, if you're just looking at this for the first time, how a USA scholarship will work for you. So the thing is, you don't need to be a rocket scientist if you're going in as a student athlete into um, a sports scholarship in the States. Note, it, it is called a student athlete, not an athlete student. So they do put a high um, focus on you as a student. If you're going in just purely on academics, you need to be, you know, you need to be rock solid and right up there achieving ac academically. If you're going in as a student athlete, they understand that you're committed to your sports and that there needs to be a balance between academics and sports. So uh, the academic requirements are different for a student athlete. That's not to say that you can slacken off. You need to be a good student, don't get me wrong, but you don't need to be a rocket scientist. Okay, so coaches are, are looking at um, international students for a whole range of reasons. And that the growth rate in the number of international students going into the States has been jumping quite significantly in recent years. Okay, the coaches are looking for undiscovered talent. They see lots of opportunities. Um, there's lots of opportunities for players at different levels and the coaches uh, are keen to actually access you as, a, as an international student athlete. Your primary goal can be academic or sporting or both and there's different opportunities depending on what your focus is and what your priority is. So coaches are hungry to um, get access to Australian and New Zealand athletes. They love the personality and the work ethic and the style of play that we bring to the team and the, the team dynamics that we create. And coaches are having trouble finding and connecting with the right players, okay? And this is why they love what we're doing. And we've actually been working with the coaches to make sure we're building programs that they're actually looking for, as opposed to just building a, a recruitment company for the purposes of just getting numbers in. So that's not what we're about. So what do recruitment agents, what don't recruitment agents tell you? Firstly, they want you to think that you can't do this on your own. 
um, they want you to believe uh, that they're your only option for getting a great result, okay? So coaches are not allowed to talk about what specific recruitment agencies they do or don't use, okay? It's part of the rules and regulations. It's quite a complex and highly regulated um, environment over there, the, the um, sports associations or the bodies that the colleges run under. So they're not allowed to talk about who they do and don't use, but they are quite vocal about the recruitment agents in general. So like everything in life, there's what things look like on the surface and then you know you scratch away and then you see what's, re what's really under the surface and how things really work, okay? So in, in August last year, I met with a whole bunch of coaches while I was in the States. There's basically two types of recruitment agencies. There's big, large recruitment agencies that do you know, mass, mass recruitment of students and athletes, okay? And then there's smaller boutique uh, agencies. They both work very differently. They both have their um, strengths and their shortcomings. So I'm not saying don't use an agency. I'm just saying you need to understand that there's limitations with pretty much every agency and you need to understand what they are for the agency that you're working with and how you... Um, circumvent that or how you compensate for that okay so with the big agencies they'll tell you oh we've got 30,000 coaches on our database um yeah big deal you can if you've got a few thousand us dollars you can actually go and buy that same database and have that same list okay that's that's not hard it's about the engagement that they have with individual coaches right that's the big point of difference and when they're that big and they're claiming to be everywhere at all the time, they can't have those personal relationships with all the coaches and all the colleges. It just doesn't happen. Some agents will only promote their athletes to some colleges and not others. So boutique agencies typically tend to only work with a very few or small number of colleges. So it means that there's lots of opportunities that you're potentially not even being exposed to depending on the agency that you're with. And as I said, coaches are not allowed to um, promote or tell you which agency that agencies they use if they do use one at all. And a lot of them don't use agencies. So recruitment agents want you to believe that the process is too complicated, so you pay them thousands of dollars up front. Now, don't get me wrong, there's good agencies out there. Um, it's just about how do you tell whether you're with a good one or not. We thought we were going to get the result with the agency we were with, and at the end of the day, two years down the track, we found that we weren't. So um, not that they, they were good people, they just didn't get the result, okay? So they reinforce this whole complication process by overloading you with information on their websites and the processes that they take you through, okay? So it, it sets you up to go, okay, yeah, this is all too hard. Yeah, I'll, I've got to pay thousands of dollars. Or if you don't go with an agency, you know, you're then on your own and you've got to find out all these um, pitfalls and problems and hassles uh, yourself like we did. Okay, so it makes it hard for you to put all of the pieces together, all the essential core pieces together so that you can basically take the action you need to take to get the result that you want. Okay, so if you just do a quick search on sports scholarships and go through some of the websites that are there, you've, you're going to find you quick, quickly run down a rabbit warren um, and end up confused, okay? So agents won't tell you this. Um, you know, when we were speaking with coaches, you know, basically the big agencies out there, because they're trying to hit everybody, they're doing a spray and pray approach with emails and your profile. So they're just vomiting emails out into the, um, the coaching arena, hoping, it's like throwing mud at a wall. They're hoping, throw enough um, profiles out there and hopefully some stick, okay? The boutique agencies, they're, they're just, they're not contacting lots of coaches. So you're missing out on lots of opportunities. You're not even being seen, okay? So coaches were telling us that um, they're getting 100, 110, 120 plus emails a day coming into their inbox during peak recruiting season. And they simply don't have the time to actually get to them all. So they're just, they're just a lot of stuff is just being missed. A lot of, not stuff, a lot of athletes and their futures are just being overlooked, okay, um, because of these, these spray and pray approaches, okay. And coaches have even told us that they block agents' emails. So the agents might be sending emails, but they're 
the um, coaches are definitely not seeing them. Okay. And if coaches are working with um, an agency, they're typically working with a select agency if they're working with one at all. So you go with an agency, but you have no idea. You might have a bunch of um, colleges on your shortlist and the, um, they're not even dealing with the agency. You're not even, emails are not even getting through. Okay. So we talked about the, the coaches, what they can and can't say to you. So this was the case with Georgia. Uh, coaches simply didn't know she existed because the Division One coaches didn't appear to be communicating with the agency that, that we were with. So they definitely weren't communicating with Georgia. Um, and we had just assumed that we were with the agency, so things were going to be taken care of. We did what we thought we needed to do. There's a whole lot of other things we needed to do. So we've spoken to plenty of parents um, and students that have found the same issues. You know, spoken to other parents that have tried to go it alone because they didn't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a, an agency because I've he you know, heard similar stories to ours. So they've tried to go it on their own, but they've gone about it the wrong way and they've gone and emailed a bunch of colleges and then no communication, no result. Okay, so we've been able to help some of those families with their um, with our thirty day game plan to take that zero communication into direct communication with um, with coaches. Okay, so there's a few critical things that you need to understand about getting a coach's attention, and our thirty day game plan is taking about taking you step by step through that process. Okay. Academics matter. You don't need to be a rocket scientist, but you do need to study the right subjects and you do need to get um, good grades. And if your academics are average, then you, then you need to be a, a better um, athlete in your chosen sport to increase the number of options and opportunities. But each college has a minimum academic requirement and doesn't matter how much the coach loves you as an athlete, if you can't meet those minimum academic acceptances, sorry, you're not getting a sports scholarship offer. Okay, so it's important to do both. So we take you through, we take you through processes to help you um, achieve in both academics and sports. Start collecting video footage of your games or your events, whatever sport you're in. Even if you are unsure whether you want to go to the US or not, Start to collect video footage of your games. One, so you can analyze it. That's gonna help you with your own personal game. You can see what's working, you can see what's not working. But if you're gonna go through the um, US scholarship process, good quality video footage is going to be your best friend because coaches are not gonna to talk to you if they can't see um, what you're like as a player, okay? So it's better to start this process early and start contacting coaches early and stay in touch with coaches consistently. Now, when you first contact the coach, depending on your age, the coach may not be able to respond to you because there's, there's rules about when they can and can't respond to athletes' parents and athletes themselves. So we go into that, that whole process in our 30-day game plan. Um, and you need to have a plan so that you are persistent and consistent in the way that you engage with coaches and follow up. So they're the, they're the critical areas that you need to focus on. Okay, so um, if, you're, if you're not sure what's on offer, if you're not sure whether a USA Sports Scholarship and going into that type of program is going to be right for you, don't worry, you don't need to make any big decisions, okay? We'll take you step by step through the investigation process. We'll give you a framework to build out a game plan and there's no big ob obligations, there's no big commitments on um, your part. You don't have to follow through, you don't have to go, but we're going to give you everything to put yourself in a position to go if at the end of the day you choose to, okay? Then um, you can decide whether it's something that you want to pursue as you go through the process, and it's simply a step-by-step -step process of discovery for you guys, okay? So let me ask you a question. Um, are you enjoying the webinar so far? Is, is this useful to you? So if you want to throw something into the chat, just yes, no, would like to see this, keep going, whatever. Um, but I'm going to keep going anyway. Okay, so we've covered off on um, how sports scholarship in the USA can give you a winning edge with your sports, with your academics, with your career, 
and give you a whole lot of adventure and fun in the process. Um, you know, what agents don't tell you about, the things that you need to be considerate of, okay? And then the critical steps that you need to take to get a coach's attention. Okay, so who wants to take things to the next level? You know, again, just drop something in the message bank. If, if this is resonating with you if, you, if this is interesting to you, I really want to know um, what you like, what you don't like, what concerns you have. So yeah, just, just throw some comments into the question, into the chat box. And basically what I want to do is just step you through our 30 day um, game plan course. Okay, it's an online course that you can take that will step you through the investigation process. Okay, it's all about helping you take control of the process, making sure that you maximise the opportunities and exposure if you want to go to the States and getting you um, in the position to get the best um, scholarship offers that you can and helping you make contact with coaches in a way that's going to get your results. Okay, so here's what you get as part of the 30-day um, game plan. You get access to our online course, okay? You get a quick start guide to USA Sports Scholarships. You get a USA Sports Scholarship checklist so you don't miss anything in the process. And we also give you a university or college uh, worksheet so you can shortlist as you go through the investigation pro process, you can start to shortlist the colleges that are of interest to you. Okay, so... Um, Week one is all about vision building, discovering what's on offer, going, yeah, look, this is a goal that I want, setting some goals for yourself, creating a plan or a strategy for achieving those goals, and then what are the action steps that you need to take to get you there? Um, week two is about researching colleges, having a look at their academic requirements and what does that mean, having, having a look at the teams and the makeup of different teams of colleges that interest you through that process. And then week three is about building yourself a profile and a personal brand okay kids social media be really smart with social media for goodness sake um, I've had some kids contact me I've looked at their social media scrolled through a couple of posts and the alarm bells go off and they create a bad first impression and I'd go you know what there's no way I'd put that kid in front of a, um, a coach or if I was a coach their social media page would would end me wanting to contact them because of some of the rubbish that they put on there that's your personal brand, guys. The image that you put out on social media, your personal brand is your biggest asset. Now, that's not going to make too much sense to you. Talk to mum and dad about that. But if you take nothing away from this, understand that your personal brand is your biggest asset, okay? Um, and then week four is about contacting coaches, staying focused and long-term planning to get you the results that you're after. And then we throw in a, um, a section for parents because... Parents, you guys can make or break this process. Um, when I was, you know, in my chatting with coaches, I get a whole bunch of war stories where the parents have been the ones that have derailed the student athletes um, scholarship options where the coach has been um, wanting the kid and wanting to offer uh, the student athlete a scholarship and the parents have derailed the process because of how they handled the conversation, how they've handled their part of the the um, negotiations. So that's a really critical piece to understand your very important role in the process, but you, you need to be very um, conscious of how you engage with coaches as parents. Um, now, typically, an agency is going to charge you somewhere between um, you know, $4,000 and $10,000 to access their services. You know, there's some, there's some um, database services where you, know, you can pay $1,000, $2,000 um, you know, but you just really need to do your homework. You need to understand the limitations of whatever services that you're paying for and, and then work out how you can control the process to get you the best result. So our two girls are experiencing a completely different um, scholarship journey because of what we learned along the way. So at 16, Amelia, um, the one on the left, She's in grade 11. She's directly connected with over a dozen Division I coaches in the USA. Um, she's well on track to receive multiple offers. She's going to have um, choices as to where she goes and she's going to know relatively early in the process as to where she's going and, and, and when and what her offers are going to be. Contrast that with Georgia when we were with an agency and we're in year, you know, she's approaching the end of year 12 with no, no sort of serious 
no acceptable offers. She had two serious offers from um, smaller rural colleges in in um, in lower level um, sporting levels that she didn't want to go into, but she had no contact from Division One coaches. And it was what we learned from that process with Georgia that's put Amelia on um, a situation where um, she's basically running the running her recruitment process herself with a little bit of help from us. Okay, so it was, it was that sort of contrasting experiences given us what we um, what we needed to put together this game plan for you. So who's this work for? Student athletes who play a scholarship sports, okay, who want to take their sports to an elite level or they want the combination of um, the student athlete experience where they're focused on their degree but they still want a quality sporting experience as a bonus. So there's lots of different opportunities there. So I'm not going to read through all these. These are the scholarship sports um, in the States where we can help um, athletes with if you're in one of those. Okay, so why do people get started with this? Um, you might be thinking, you know, you can't get started because it's going to take some big commitment. Um, well, the good news is it's, it's not. Um, it's about persistence and consistency with this whole process. Um, and you can get started with virtually no obligation. Okay, and there's no big commitments to be made up front and no obligation on you to go at the end of the day if you decide it's not right for you. Okay, so with the 30-day game plan, we're going to shortcut the whole discovery and investigation and planning process for you, and it's just going to be for a one-off payment of $47. Now, we're doing this as an introductory offer. Um, the price is going to go up in a couple of days. It'll go up firstly to $97, and then as we continue to add content to the 30-day uh, game plan, it'll be going up to at least a minimum of $197 in the not-too-distant future. So you're guaranteed to save $150 today, and we're also going to give you all of the additional content that we add to um, the course for future updates, okay? So in the game plan toolbox, again, you get the online course, you get the quick start guide, you get the checklist, and you also get the worksheet, okay? And it's going to help you fast track your research, confirm whether a scholarship is right for you, and give you the tools you need to create a plan and make your dream a reality. We're going to help you build a killer profile and make sure that you're engaging the right way with coaches so that you get noticed and how to directly get in touch with them. And we're going to show you how to uh, create a plan and manage the process and relationships ongoing. So you don't need to invest thousands of dollars or hundreds of hours like we did. Um, you know, what we put together is sort of like um, painting by numbers. So uh, we didn't know what was involved or how things really worked when we started with Georgia. So we thought the recruitment agency was the answer. Um, it turned out not to be for us. And you know, we've had a lot of people go through the same experience. First time around, it cost us $5,000 uh, or nearly $5,000 and a huge amount of our time. And this time around, Amelia is virtually driving the process for herself using the tools that I've just talked about and a little bit of guidance from us as parents. And you as parents have got um, the game plan resources there to act as a guide uh, for your child as well. So yeah, no big upfront investment from our perspective. So it's gonna save you time and money. And uh, you know, the 30 day game plan, even if you're going to, if you're going to use an agency um, or if you're with an agency, the 30 day game plan is going to act like an insurance policy for you, okay, and give you the widest range of options, put you in control of the process. So, yeah, you might be going, oh, this sounds like a lot of work. I've got sports and school and work and part time job and rah, rah, rah. It doesn't need to be a problem because we drip feed through this information to you over the course of approximately a month, um, day by day. Most of the modules or lessons are less than 30 minutes and we have big gap days um, so that you can catch up on research, you can catch up on what you're doing. So it's not hard. And the thing is we give you a time frame to work in, but the reality is um, we, want you to, we want you to do it and do it persistently and consistently, but you don't lose access to the course content. So if it takes you a little bit longer, you know, so be it. Um, we've covered off on what you get as part of this process. So it's massive value, even if you never go, because the 30 day game plan at its core, it's about vision building for you as a student athlete. It's about goal setting both academically 
and sporting wise. So it's a, it's at its core about personal development. So these skills and processes that you're going to learn, they're going to be hugely valuable in everything that you do. Okay, so um, whether you do or don't go to the university, it's going to be the best $47 you've ever spent. Um, and yeah, so I'll skip over that. So it's going to make it faster and easier for you because it's all laid out in a simple process and you're going to save yourself $150 if you buy it today. So there's no risk. There's a 14 day money back guarantee. And so I've rushed through that little bit at the end because I'm conscious of the time. I know we want to get into uh, some Q and A and I see that there's been a few questions here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post um, the link here into the chat box. Okay, and so if you want to buy the um, the 30 day game plan, the link's going to be in the chat box. Okay, and we're also going to announce the winner of the um, of the prize. So, what is the prize? We're giving away a uh, free access to the 30 day game plan for one lucky winner, plus. Um, two years of subscription to our um, Game Changer program. Now, our Game Changer program, in the interest of time, I haven't gone into that in any detail. It's basically a membership program where we give you access to our database, direct contact with coaches, and all the tools you need to manage and run your profile and contact and engage with coaches directly. So we're going to give, give away um, two years' worth of access to that. And I'm just waiting for uh, my lovely assistant to tell me who was drawn out for that. So just bear with me a second. I'm just going to go through um, the messages and have a look and see what we've got here. Okay. So what's the selection process? Um, the selection process depends. It depends on the college and it depends on the athletes that are currently in the team who are leaving next year. Okay, so because the college coaches have, and so I'll talk about field hockey here, uh, the college coaches have a squad and every year there's a bunch of those kids that are graduating. So every year they need to recruit new kids into fill those spots, okay? So they're constantly growing athletes into their senior year or their last year of university and then losing those athletes. So there's this constant turnover within every team. Now, so they recruit every year. The athletes or players, particularly in a team sport, so the players that an individual coach at an individual college needs from year to year changes based on... Um, the kids that are remaining and the kids that are leaving. So you may have your heart hell bent on um, going to UConn. Let's throw a name out there. UConn um, uh, University of Connecticut or um, University of North Carolina who won the um, championships for field hockey this year. You may be hell bent on going there and you may be good academically. You might meet their academic requirements. You might be a really great defender, but their team's chock a block full of defenders at the moment and the players they're losing are mainly strikers and they just want strikers. And if they're going to recruit international players, they're only recruiting strikers. So it doesn't matter how good you are and how much you want to go to a university, that coach doesn't need your particular position in, that, in the particular year you're looking to go to the university, okay? So that's sort of a scenario-based example. The selection process then just basically comes down to do you do you meet their minimum academic requirements? Yes, tick. Okay, academics are um, are done. Um, then what's your playing skills? What are you like as a player? Um, positionally, yes, your position wise, you fit within the team. Great. Now the coach wants to get to know you as an athlete. They want to get to so they want the athlete to drive the engagement and relationship process. They don't want the parents to be driving that process. So the coaches want to engage with you, you the student, you the athlete. They want to build a rapport for you with you, and they want to make sure that they're the right coach fit for you as an athlete, and you're the right 
athlete fit for them as a team, okay? So they're investing hundreds of thousands of dollars in you as an athlete and they're putting their job on the line to recruit you as an athlete. So they're very serious about making sure that there's a good fit all around because you need to be happy as an athlete. They need to be happy with you um, as a team and a coach. So I hope that sort of broadly covers it. Um, right, so I'm just looking through the questions. Is it possible to get a copy of the PowerPoint slides sent through? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'll, do, I'll go one better. We'll give you a replay. So everyone that registered for the um, webinar will give you a replay. And basically we're going to, um, you can then watch that replay from start to finish. Um, okay, are all university courses available? Does HexDebt work in the same way as it does in Australia? Different colleges have different university degrees. So depending on what you want to study academically, if you're hell bent on a particular um, degree and the sport, the college you want to go to from a sporting perspective doesn't have it, then you need to make a choice. Interesting thing around the um, US university system is the first two years are pretty much core subjects. So you don't actually, in Australia, you've got to, you've got to make a decision on what you're going in at when you start your degree. And if you don't get your first choice, you've got to you know, go your second choice, third choice, fourth choice, blah, blah, down the list until you, you get whatever's offered to you. And then you go in on that and you're making a commitment to that degree. In the US, you don't choose um, your major until the end of year two. And the ability for you to pivot and change your mind and change direction in the US college system is um, hugely flexible. It's, it's a great system over there, okay? So, now, HEX, basically, HEX doesn't apply over there. So, college in Australia is not free, okay? You've got all your living expenses. You've got all your sporting cost expenses. You've got, um, you're running up a debt on HEX or you're paying, for, paying as you go. US system, it's pay as you go. And then how much you pay depends on the scholarship offer that you get and negotiate and that's very much individual okay um scholarship offers in the first year vary and it depends on you as a player and you as an athlete and the college that you're dealing with okay but we'll go into more detail on that in the 30-day game plan um okay so i think we've covered off on most of the questions and our lucky winner is just bear with me a second Our lucky winner is Maddie Carrig or Maddie Carriage. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's Maddie. It's either Shannon or Shannon or Maddie. I'm going to I'm going to call Maddie because I think Shannon might be mum. So um, right, Maddie Lewin apparently. So congratulations, Maddie Lewin. You are our latest recruit. If you would like to actually go through the process, so. I'll be in touch. Uh, I'll be in touch with you, Shannon and Maddie, and uh, congratulations, guys. Any last questions? Throw them in there. Um, big thank you to um, Trid for uh, being the instigator of this. I'm just going to turn your video back on, buddy. Um, so let me find you first. Uh, looks like we might have lost uh, connection with. Um, with Trit over there. So thanks, everybody. Really appreciate you joining us. And um, yeah, just touch base with us on Facebook if you have any sort of after the event questions. Cheers.